Hey guys, so welcome back to my channel once again. So today I had Anycubic send me one of their resin printers. So we're gonna get this unboxed today, take a look at it and see what's inside. All right, so here's everything that it comes with. You got the power cables, you got instructions, an after sale service card, and a flash drive. And one of these nifty little tools, along with spatula, gloves, and everything else you'll need, screws and whatnot. Um, the one thing I don't like about this is I have no idea what anything says because it's not in English. So that really doesn't help me at all, other than looking at pictures. So that's kind of useless to me. This side is actually in English. This side is not. But this really doesn't give you any instructions on how to use it whatsoever. So we're just gonna improvise and it kind of looks like my other resin printer. So it kind of looks like it has the same features, but let's jump right over the machine and let's see what we can do. So this just lifts right up. Apparently there's more packing foam in here. I'm not exactly sure how they got this in here. There's the bed. Well, that was a struggle. All right, so if we turn it to the side, you can see down here you have your on-off switch. This is where the USB goes, and the power supply goes right in the back. Let's get this all plugged in and fired up. All right, so let's just turn this on. You can see it's starting up. So from the home screen, all you have to do is just hit tools, move. Let's just stick it with 10 millimeter. And we can move up. And as you can see, this will just move up. This will raise it, lower it. So here we have the build plate. This just sits right on top on here. We can just tighten that down. Let's move that up a little bit so you can see. And then with the hex key they give you, this kind of freely moves so you can level it. So you can loosen it and then tighten it. Um, but you should leave it loose for now. That way, once you get it into the zeroed spot, you can then tighten it up to where you need it to be. So I'll just kind of leave the wrench in there for now. And then all we're gonna do is, we're gonna just lower it all the way to the bottom. And then once you get pretty close, switch it over to one, one millimeter, and then keep going down. And make sure that's kind of straight-ish. And then you'll hear that little clank, that means it's at the bottom. Then you'll just go to 0.1 millimeter and go up a little bit until the piece of paper is just barely loose and you can kind of tug on it and pull it out. Yeah, so it's kind of loose right there. Let's go up one more. So right there is where the bottom is. So let's just tighten that up a little bit. And then if you go back, you can hit zero Z and that'll confirm where the zero is. And then we can move it back up and pull the paper out. All right, then we'll just tighten up the, the bed all the way so it's nice and tight. All right, so we'll plug in our flash drive. All right, so you're gonna wanna make sure your vat is clean from any debris or dust or anything like that because if there's dust or film or anything on that, it might not stick to the bed, it might not cure right. So always make sure that that's clean before doing anything. 
resin, you just always want to shake it first to make sure it all mixes in well. Now it says to wear gloves and a mask, but I'm not going to do that because I've used these before and that's not really necessary. So it says to go only up to, or don't go more than one third of the way up. So basically right around this line right here, you can, it's kind of hard to see, but yeah, you can kind of see it right there. So we'll fill it up to that spot. That like that. Just take this, slide it in. And then we're gonna tighten down these screws on the side. The one thing I don't really like about this is that these screws with the sides on it, it's kind of hard to get to because this whole cover doesn't come off. So the easiest way is just to move it up higher so it's out of the way. Where on the A-net, this whole cover comes off and those are really easy to get to to tighten. This one, however, Not very easy, so once you get that out of the way, then you can tighten them. Just make sure it's in all the way. All right, so those are tight. Ready to go, so now we can put the cover down. Okay, so then back from home, we'll go to print, and we have this test cube looking thing we'll print, so we'll go ahead and print that. And it loads up so you can see what you're printing, and then you just hit go. So that, that's another thing about this printer is that it keeps on beeping, and these letters are super small and it's really hard to read. And I'm not blind, so I'm not really sure. So over here it says five hours and 42 minutes to print this. So we'll let it just go and we'll come back in five hours and 42 minutes. See what it, how, see how it turned out. All right guys, so we're back. So this just finished and it said total time was five hours and 29 minutes. And I know originally it said five hours and 42 minutes. So I guess it was off by a few minutes, no big deal. But let's open this up, take a look at what we got. I'll get in closer in here and you can get this you can see. There's hardly any even supports on this, except for more like the inside. But that looks pretty good. So this is probably the part where you'd want to wear some gloves if you want to, but I would definitely put, recommend putting down some kind of paper towel or something, because this will make a mess as it just kind of drips everywhere. But you can just kind of take the little squeegee that they gave you and you just kind of give it a little uh, scrape off and there you go but i'll get this all cleaned up we'll get that base off of there and come back and see how this looks so with all this extra resin you can basically just pour it back in the bottle just be careful because it tends to just spill and you really don't want to spill it everywhere and i tend to spill it a lot so We'll just try and be careful, kind of pour fast so it doesn't go running all over the place. Kind of like that. So once you got it all cleaned back out again, you can just go ahead and sit in there. If you are gonna do another print, technically you don't need to put it back in the bottle. You can just go ahead, scrape it off, clean off the build plate and just hit print and go again. Depending on what size print you're needing, you might need to add a little bit more resin, but no big deal. So I'll just get that screwed back on and we're ready to go again. All right, guys, so let's take a look at what we actually have on the flash drive. And I got it open right here. So you have the file English photon, you have this Japanese, I'm sure it probably says the same thing, but I have no idea. Um, it actually gives you instructions. So 
on that pamphlet that you can't read, at least this gives you uh, actual instructions on what you need to do. So that's at least helpful. But let's go back into the actual software itself. You can install it, photo slicing software, click on it, Windows, Mac, yada, yada, yada. So we'll come in here. So here we have our dimensions, what we have. Let's just pick a file. And so we open it up. So that's nice. That's easy to use. If we want to scale it, move it around, we can center it, reset it. Let's just switch this to I don't know, 50. Yeah, oh, there we go. And it moves around. You can click and drag it. That's easy. Scale it if you want to make it smaller. Let's just go. Let's do 70. How about that? There we go. Nice and small. So that's easy to use. You want to rotate it. Click, do what you need to do. Reset it if you're not happy with it. That actually puts it back level on the bed. And you have front view, top view, bottom view, however you want to look at it. But if you just right click with your mouse, you can easily move it around. So then you have on the right hand side, you have layer thickness, exposure time, off time. And if you just kind of hover over, it tells you time leaving the mold release, resin mixing. So it gives you a little description of what you're actually doing if you just hover over it. So that's pretty nice. Bottom layer is eight. And I kept this all the same when I did their base little trial model, a little square thing guy that I did. Um, and it worked out really well. And I'll show you that in a few minutes. Um, that's pretty much all there is to it. If you need to center it somewhere else on the bed, add more files, it's all pretty easy. If you click on supports, you can add light, medium, heavy. Obviously this model doesn't really need any supports because there's nothing really hanging over. And resolution, if you need to change any of that, I'm not even gonna bother with that because that's not really worth it. But once you're happy with where you place it, you just go ahead and click on here is slice. And so we'll let this slice. Okay, so now that's done. It tells me it's gonna approximately take four hours and 13 minutes. I can click okay, or I can show the preview. And this will actually show you exactly what layer it's doing at a time. Obviously it doesn't really look like much, but as you can see in this model, there's 1,355 actual layers that it's curing. So it's, is it really necessary to look at this? No, obviously not, but at least you can kind of see what it's doing. So that's basically it as far as this software goes. It's not too complex. It's really easy to use. There's not much to it. Do I recommend it? Yeah, sure. It, it does the job. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. And there you go. All right, everybody. So here's the final piece. As you can see, the, the detail and everything came out awesome. It's pretty much spot on. I mean, it's nothing really wrong. That's where the little bed plate was that it adhered to. So that kind of broke off. But that's not a big deal as this was just a test print to see how well it turned out. And I mean, you, you can just look at the fine detail. I mean, there's a little kind of resin spots here and some little flakes, but overall, I mean, compared to PLA printing and anything else, this is just, I mean, amazing. It, it works really well. So I'm very happy with this printer. I mean, a couple of things I don't like about this. First of all, the the sides I don't like because you can't really get your hand in here if you're doing something, you're trying to turn these knobs. It's not really user-friendly. It's compared to 
the Annette N4, where this just comes right off. You can easily turn these knobs and you don't have to worry about it. This, however, you're kind of stuck. Can't really do anything. Um, the slicing software I really like. It works really well with this. I do like the Annette slicing software slightly better. However, I haven't really fully tested out all the capabilities of this one yet, so I can't really give you that answer. But either way, they both work just as they're supposed to. Um, I think the screen resolution down here could be a lot better. It's Some of the words are really small, and it's really hard to read what it says unless you get really close. Whereas the Anna and Ford, this one, I can read it a lot easier. It comes out a lot clearer, better. However, this is still pretty easy to use and it's not a big deal. Um, let's see, everything else seems to be just fine. I, I also don't like the instructions that they give you with it. That's kind of, well, I don't speak Japanese, so I have no idea what it says. But on the flash drive that it comes with, at least there's an English instruction. So that's helpful. Um, I don't like their plastic scraper that they give you because it just doesn't really work that great. It does, but if you let the print adhere to the bed too long, this just isn't going to cut it. You'll need a metal scraper just to be able to get it off which I have plenty of them, so no big deal. But that's one thing that I would like is maybe to throw in a metal one with the plastic one, but that's just my two cents. Um, overall, it's a great machine. It does exactly what it needs to do. The prints come out pretty much spot on. You don't really see any printing lines. If you can try and get as close as I can. But, I mean, it's pretty much flawless. And I, I can't complain at all. So, overall, I'll do some more testing with this and I'll be making some more stuff and casting some more stuff on my channel. So make sure you check it out and see what we're gonna make with this and yeah. But as always, guys, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.